Thank you. Um, uh, welcome, everybody, to uh, I think it's one of the first industry sessions today. I want to quickly do an introduction to the amazing lineup of panelists that are, that are joining us. Um, from STEPS, uh, we have Tani Mungwe and Don Atkins, who I know in South Africa hardly need any introduction. Uh, we also have Nadia Lachewski, who's a project manager at Deutsche Welle, who's joining us. We have Christilla Hula Khan and Aike Nabe, I hope I'm not messing up your surname, Aike, um, who are joining us from Paris. They're busy on post production on, on their film. Um, Ike is the director and Christilla the producer. And uh, shortly, we'll also be joined by Philip Miller, who's a commissioning editor at Arte. Um, today, we're, we're speaking about Generation Africa, uh, the many forms in which uh, people are able to collaborate and are empowered through these incredible partnerships from co-productions, organizations collaborating across Africa, um, as well as incredible mentorship and support for filmmakers across the continent. Um, I think always good to start in the beginning with an introduction. So Don, if we can, if we can hand the mic to you first and, and just tell us why Generation Africa or what is Generation Africa to someone who's, who's listening in and, and hasn't come across this incredible initiative yet. Um, we started the project because um, we were looking at the huge uh, youth population on the continent, the largest in the world, and had the very strong feeling that uh, we weren't hearing the, the voices of the youth. And at the same time, we wanted to um, find a way to build a collection of films that allow as many filmmakers in, on the continent to participate um, and also bring together regions which hadn't been working together before, and that's Francophone and Anglophone Africa. Um, so that, those were the first ideas around the project. And then as we started developing it, um, there was this so-called migration crisis in Europe. And, um, and we thought that we could link the, um, the challenges and opportunities that young people were facing with migration. Uh, because I've been involved in migrating, but the biggest migration that actually takes place is within the continent. 80% of all migration in Africa takes place on the continent uh, between countries, surrounding countries and regions. And so we just felt that we could use this to open up uh, a way to hear new voices on contemporary issues and give another insight into what is happening on the continent today. Amazing, to thank you, you Don. Thank you, Don. I think from there, um, Tani, maybe tell us, you know, growth until today, you know, what are the impacts you've seen starting in, in 2018? Um, what has the response been like? Have you got an idea of um, some statistics you can, you can share with us in terms of the number of filmmakers, countries and co-productions that you've seen in the last few years? Um, sure. Um, when we put out the call for stories in 2018, we received about 180 stories from all over Africa in English and um, French. Um, a lot of the submissions that we received um, kind of gave us an indication of the state of documentary in different parts of the continent. Um, there are many uh, amazing ideas, incredibly talented storytellers with a very strong kind of grounding in creative storytelling for documentary. But there are also a lot of stories which were um, kind of couched for uh, kind of developmental and didactic kind of storytelling where you know that this is aimed at um, a UNESCO or United Nations agency, where it's just about behavioral change and not really about kind of uh, sticking to the tenets of storytelling, character-driven, uh, creative documentary. Um, we, we also, sorry, there was an interruption. We also um, were able to, um, be really impressed with the, uh, the kind of diversity of experiences throughout the continent, not only in terms of the ability of filmmakers, but also the experiences and perspectives around um, migration as a topic. So how we structured the project was that um, there was a lot of uh, professional support and uh, skills sharing, peer-to-peer -peer skills sharing that was part of the program from the beginning. So for story development, we invited 45 filmmakers and had three workshops 
workshops in East Africa, two in West Africa, one for English speaking filmmakers in Ghana and one for French speaking filmmakers in Ouagadougou, where we brought in documentary experts as well as migration experts um, and local media practitioners practitioners to talk about what stories were being told in the region, how stories were being told in the region. And this was really quite um, useful because a lot of the filmmakers also changed the stories that they were working on. One of the films that we have uh, showing at Encounters is The Last Shelter, which is um, coming from international success, having won the CPH Doc Award at uh, the, the grand prize uh, for the film. And the filmmaker for this film had another story when they came into the workshop and out of the interactions with the experts in the workshop they came up with a new story which has been quite a great success so after this we um we developed some 35 stories uh providing financial support for people to spend time with their characters um and to also make um visual material of the story um and to work on a strong project proposal from there, we have been able to bring 25 films, 11 feature films, 11 medium length films, and three short films um, from 16 countries around the continent into production. We have 18 stories that are in post-production now, two that are complete, and the rest are just finishing their, their shooting. What a big central aim of this project has been to build community for documentary in Africa. Community with filmmakers within the continent um, to be able to work together um, under circumstances that wouldn't be possible normally because travel is very difficult, resources to meet other filmmakers and exchange is also very difficult within the documentary sector. And I think we've built quite a big community. Filmmakers are reaching out to each other, asking for resources, asking for support and um, networking for other projects that they're doing but also we're really proud that we kind of towards the end of putting together a very impressive collection of stories that are showing us what a new generation of African filmmakers is kind of shaping up to look like, but also this generation of like African youth and what their experiences and perspectives are. It's not very heavy on statistics, the, the kind of response that I gave you, but I hope that kind of satisfies. Absolutely, and I, I'm sure I can speak for everyone. I mean, it's an incredible achievement in such a short amount of time. Um, and, and, and I can't wait for us to start speaking about some of those films that, that have come, come out of the initiative. But I think first off, just you know, hats off to, to you and Don really being the engine room for this and, and to the really important funders that have been a part of it as well, who we'll also get to momentarily. But first, I think a virtual round of applause is in order for everything that you've achieved to date. Um, I think it's really great that we also have um, the filmmakers with us as well, um, because this is one of the exciting projects that's in, in post-production at the moment, and that's the film called No U-Turn. Um, we have EK with us, as well as uh, one of his producers, Chris Stiller, and they're um, in post-production. They're the window, to me, they're on my left. I'm not too sure where they are to you. Um, they're coming to us uh, out of Paris at the moment, where they're furiously busy editing the film, so we're really grateful for their time. Um, Okay, let's kick it off. Maybe tell us a little bit more about um, about your film, No U Turn, and then uh, and then take us through the role that that Generation Africa has has played in in helping that film come to life. Um, well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a, a pleasure to be here. Um, no U Turn is um, it's quite an interesting um, journey. <laughs> the film itself is a journey and the, the idea, the whole process of making the film has also been like a very um, interesting life changing journey. Um, coming from a fiction um, filmmaking background, um, this is my first documentary film. And I mean, I couldn't have, like I couldn't have wished for a better support than that what Generation Africa has provided for the for the film so far. Um, I've always wanted to work in documentary, and I have never really gotten the chance to um, get that started until I came across the open call um, for the Generation Africa, and I dropped everything I was doing, and you know. <laughs> literally just wrote the synopsis um, for the film right there and then and just um, sent it in. And so I was quite excited when 
I got a mail and um, the next thing I know, I was on, on the plane to Accra for the first um, development um, workshop, which literally changed my life almost immediately. Um, I, I, so, and from then it's, it's been an amazing um, experience, you know, so um, being part of the Generation Africa um, exactly has what, what the, the vision um, that, that Dawn has for, for the Generation Africa is exactly what I've been experiencing. Um, like Tiny rightly said, we've had the opportunity to meet other filmmakers from across first West Africa and then now from across Africa. And um, the networking and the sharing of resources has been amazing. And, um, and, and now um, with Christilla co-production in France and international co-production has also like opened a different vista, um, you know. So it's, it's just been, um, it's been a journey. It's, it's been an amazing journey. It is still. It, yes, it's been and it's still ongoing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a subtle nudge in the ribs there from your producer to remind you that the journey is still <laughs> as, ongoing. As, and as always. <laughs> you are expected back in the edit momentarily. It, it mm. seems like it. <laughs> um, Christella, tell us a little bit more about your experience um, working with Generation Africa. I mean, you've you've been involved with films um, uh, internationally, uh, nationally as well. What's been unique about this experience? What what doors have possibly been opened to you that that perhaps weren't open before? But the, the thing is that um, I was uh, very lucky when Don and Tiny um, invited me to uh, to attend the workshop uh, because um, I, I would say that uh, when you when you want to I didn't want to make any co-production. I was uh, I was there um, as a tutor, and I was happy to share what I know about production. And I was uh, I, I said I'm, I was lucky because I learned a lot. Uh, because you, you cannot um, you can go, cannot be involved in co-production without the artistic point of view. And it was amazing to spend the first time in Ouagadougou one week uh, and to see the interaction between between the filmmakers and. And it's always something, um, it's a miracle when after eight days, uh, just a little story at the beginning is becoming um, a, a strong story. So it was the first experience in Ouagadougou. And after when we met in Ghana, I met uh, Ike. And, um, and so, so the experience was very good. I must say that at the beginning, I didn't think about any production. I, I just wanted to, to attend that and to help and to share my thoughts and maybe to help. Um, and I received a lot, <laughs> but um, when I and when I met Ike, I think that um, Generation Africa is um, uh, it's absolutely wonderful. It's uh, for uh, from my perspective from Europe uh, because Don and Tiny uh, succeed to convince Arte uh, to to be on board. Um, it speaks a lot for us in Europe and especially in France. Um, as you know, we have we have a um, um, particular relationship in Fran between France and Africa and Western Africa. And um, most of the time on TV, even on cinema, but on TV, documentaries are not directed by African people, but um, French people or English people, European people about African issues. And, um, and that's why I, I, uh, uh, the, the, um, the film by E.K. is interesting um, for me, of course, because I'm the producer, but. Uh, for, for friends and for the TV, it's because, um, like Don said, we change our minds and we share our thoughts and the perspective is not the same. I mean, seen from Europe, migration seen from Europe is not the same that the mi migration seen from Africa. So um, I guess that the audience will learn a lot. And also because uh, the story uh, told by Ike, uh, that is not finished. <laughs> we are not really in post-production because we have to shoot again. Um, but uh, it's interesting because um, I think that for the audience and even for me, um, um, we have another, um, we, we give another meaning of migration. It's not only migration to come from Africa and to go in Europe. And as, as it, is, it, it was said before, uh, three years ago, we had a big migration crisis in Europe. And I think that people changed their minds and, and migrants were enemies. But for a long time in France, migrants weren't enemies. So um, 
I, rem I, I'm, I would say that the first time I talked to Arte, uh, even for the commissioning editors, um, it was uh, interesting for them because we change our perspective. And in a way, uh, when we are um, uh, optimistic like me, <laughs> Uh, maybe it can change a little bit. And I think that um, migration, literally the word migration, it's more on a intracontinental, yeah. intracontinental. Uh, and it's not only between Africa and Europe. And, um, and, and that's why I think it's, it's, a, it's a relevant um, because in a co-production, uh, first it's, um, it's a story, I mean, it's a human story. A human story and after the second step it's an artistic story and the third step is a financial story <laughs> a co-production story um but uh, it's interesting to i think but may maybe i'm wrong but why you will tell i think it's interesting because my um my questions uh when i ask ik about the film and i ask questions Sometimes uh, the answer are, um, I think that they are trivial for him, but very relevant for us. Because something trivial or banal in Africa, sometimes it's not for European people. And that's why um, I think that the co-production makes sense, definitely makes sense between the two continents. Amazing, I can, thank you. I can talk a lot, so. <laughs> No, 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 that was great. And I think it's just amazing to see how, you know, a, a chance meeting, you know, you being there in a mentorship capacity can lead to something that's actually contributing to really, really important dialogue, uh, you know, in, in your country and then across Europe as well. Um, I think that's an interesting, uh, is that something that you had in mind, Don and Tiny, when initially setting out um, with Generation Africa, the idea of sort of mentorship leading to co-productions? Um, was that always up front or is that just sort of due to the amazing alchemy that you found in the last few years? Sure, I'll go. Um, so, I mean, I think that there is, um, there's a, firstly, the nomenclature of using the word mentorship uh, that I think puts a certain kind of veil on what we're talking about. What we're really talking about is kind of like, um, Liani Mansdrop is in the audience and we had a meeting just a few weeks ago and she gave me a really good term, which is like peer to peer skills exchange. Um, I think that in documentary communities where there is a lot more uh, people working and exchanging on a regular basis. It is possible to kind of move from one stage of your filmmaking to the next project to the next project and gain more skills and more perspective of how people do things. Because I think a film production and a film set is a very contained and closed kind of environment. And what you learn in that environment is very hard to share with the wider community. So part of growing a community for documentary uh, filmmakers is also also has the, the effect of fit people exchanging and uh, growing in their kind of uh, artistic uh, or craft in um, making documentary. And we think that because um, documentary is so nascent in certain parts of Africa and generally and broadly in Africa, it's very hard for documentary filmmakers in, in the continent to have that exchange and to grow in their skills. But also for this thing to happen, it requires a lot of resources and a project like this that can be able to mobilize the financial resources, that can be able to mobilize the community as well to bring people together is a really rare opportunity. So a lot of the um, uh, consultants, whether it's story consultants, dramaturgy consultants, and editing consultants who are working in the project are also gaining in this exchange, uh, but it is ob obviously primarily for the filmmakers that have been selected to participate. And, you know, I think that a lot of the filmmakers, most of all of the filmmakers in the collection have been one really enthusiastic about the opportunity to talk with filmmakers who've made international level documentary films, really forthcoming with questions about very uh, mundane, but also very specific um, uh, questions about documentary filmmaking. And what we've seen, especially with the 18 films that are in post-production, where we're seeing rough cuts coming from 
from the films is that as soon as um, we move from the assembly and the rough cut to moving to further rough uh, to, to further cuts of the film, there's significant uh, improvement in the edits of the film. There's significant um, amount of like depth that's gained as the filmmakers have someone as a sounding board to kind of work with. And, and again, this sounding board is really hard to come by when you're surrounded by other filmmakers who are making commercials, adverts, um, and fiction in the work that they do on a daily basis. I think with documentary, there's a lot more depth to the storytelling and it's really helpful um, for us in the films, the products that we're seeing to see what the effect, effect of that exchange is, but I think also for the filmmakers, for their own abilities. Don, do you want to add to what I, I can just add, yeah. <laughs> I'll just add a couple of things here. One of them, um, you know, one of the things we wanted to do was build networks and build relationships. And, um, and that comes through the professional supporters. I mean, we've had over 18, I think, uh, professional supporters or peer to peer workers um, in the drama G of the films. And now we at 12 to 15 consultant editors who are working with local editors, but also the opportunity to build these co-productions um, so that filmmakers on the continent have an opportunity to really ex expand their networks, build relationships, uh, work at a different level, and, and I think that's been really important a uh, part of the project. And, and seriously, I mean, art has been a, a great support in that. Um, that opened up a, a number of co-production possibilities, but uh, also not to mention the incredible support we've had from Deutsche Welle Academy in order to be able to pull this project together. Um, and at the same time, you know, each of the production teams have been looking for funding themselves. So there's been the co-financing part of it which means that that opens up also um, more professionalism about um, sustainability in terms of being able to finance their own productions going forward. Thank you. Amazing. I mean, it's great to hear. I and mean, you can really start to get a sense of the of the network that you've built. And, and I think that also speaks to sustainability. You know, um, even if people aren't necessarily participating in this initiative, you, the hope that is the connections and the relationships that are forged through it um, would you know continue outside of the project. Um, as well. I think, Tang, you mentioned resources, and I think, Don, you also uh, started sharing your, your gratitude there, and I think that's a good segue to, to go to uh, Deutsche Academy. Um, Nadja, would you like to tell us a little bit more about, let's just start off first with Deutsche Welle, uh, you know, what is the philosophy behind, behind you know, what, you, what do you guys look for when you're looking to support financially, and, um, and how has, you know, being a part of Generation Africa contributed to that vision? What's, what's this sort of alignment there? Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to. So th first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's very, very much a pleasure to be part of this panel today. Um, to give you an uh, insight uh, of our work, um, we, DW Academy, is part of Deutsche Welle, the public uh, German foreign broadcaster, and we are the strategic partner of the BMZ, the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. So that's actually where the money comes from. Um, and Generation Africa is actually a perfect match for us because we are very much in line with the um, with the objectives of this project, uh, and we share those uh, objectives. So we also want to empower um, filmmakers in the so-called global uh, south to really tell their own stories, um, to connect with each other, um, to have the resources, everything that they need. I mean. Uh, the capacity in terms of um, financing, as well as uh, training if needed, as well as time, and just the freedom to work on their projects and to, well, to develop them, uh, yeah, in order for those projects to, uh, to travel also internationally and to create a visibility for the uh, respective industries and maybe um, yeah, also uh, provoke a dialogue about uh, socially relevant topics. So basically, that's all. Uh, th those are all things that Generation Africa um, promotes, and um, so it's a perfect match for us. Definitely sounds like the the perfect marriage. Um, it, it's uh, tell us a little bit more. I mean, I I, um, I was speaking to Tani yesterday about it as well, and she was saying that this is you know just one aspect of of the of 
one of the projects that you're busy funding um, on the continent. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about the, the film fund, some of the other initiatives you're supporting yeah, as well? Sure. Sure, sure. So we work uh, currently in so-called focus countries in 10 different countries. Most of them are in Africa, but we also um, work in Colombia, for example. Um, so we, it's a variety of different um, uh, projects, actually, and we partly implement them ourselves. But uh, most of the time we work with uh, partners, such in this case with STEPS. Um, we also work, for example, to give you some examples in Nigeria with uh, LADIMA, the Film Academy for Women, um, and also in Colombia with DOCO, which is a distribution initiative, and we support them uh, with a impact producing um, project. And then also uh, we set up a film fund. We launched it uh, this year, a development fund in Ethiopia where um, five amazing grantees were selected a couple of weeks ago. And we're going to roll this fund out in Tanzania and Uganda as, that, as well this year. Wow, busy indeed. <laughs> yes, amazing yeah. to hear. Um, I think it's, you know, we've been speaking about these incredible um, sort of strategic interventions and you know the 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 incredible sort of empowering filmmakers and, and ensuring that the stories come to light and I think what's what's really important in in that consideration is also making sure that these stories are seen and that audiences um, can watch these films and I think that's where Arte comes in so um Philip maybe tell us a little bit more about you know some of the films that you've seen coming out of Generation Africa um are there some you know particular films that that come to mind that that really were quite eye-opening to you um could you maybe share some of the audience responses uh, that you've that you've received so far i'm happy to be here today i'm glad uh, uh, to bring my my personal expertise there in this panel discussion um uh, our programs have not yet been broadcasted so we don't have any expertise on this kind of uh, on the broadcasting of of, uh, of uh, Generation Africa, um, I, I have been seduced by the fact that we will have a, a huge panel of different filmmakers uh, from different several countries in in, in Black Africa, um, and um, uh, what what I was personally interested in is to have an inside point of view, so from Africans from African filmmakers, outdoors and so on, producers on Africa, on African topics. That's not uh, usual for a TV station to have something like that, but we are really aware of such kind of program. We in my personal department, which is TIMA and geopolitics. Uh, and we decided when, after Don spoke to me and Tiny two years ago in, in, in Durban about this project, we said, okay, I, I'm interested in and maybe I can interest my my company, and there were some other people therein, uh, and we we built something like an internal uh, joint venture between um, Arte Gaillet, where I am working for, here in Strasbourg, which is uh, the, the, the central, the place we are broadcasting from, and uh, with CDF in, in Germany, in Mainz, um, Martin Pieper working there, and in France we had uh, Mark Edwards, and we all decided to take each of us a part of the different selection of the, the offer, and uh, so that uh, the first step was made for, for the films. It's always important to have one first TV station which says, okay, we go in, and this gives uh, an impulse to the others. And um, there is one signal which is for me very important to say that we were right because uh, the last shelter won the prize for the best uh, dog film in uh, Copenhagen a few months ago. So, and this is also the film I am working on with the TV version, one hour version. I'm very happy. It's a, it's a, it's a really fantastic experience, and I would like to miss having done it. Well, that's. I think, and we, we will also, I guess, uh, have the films themselves on screen in the linear uh, 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 broadcasting. We will also have them on our um, web platforms and so on. So it's for, for us, it's really a huge, a huge, uh, uh, a huge uh, program initiative. 
that's all I can say today. Thank you for that, Liv. Um, and then, um, Philippe, if I may say something as well. <clears throat> Jolene, can I just add something there? <clears throat> um, I think what's really important is that we were given the opportunity for these three departments um, across Arta to collaborate on the project. <clears throat> you know, Arta France, Arta Gaia in Strasbourg, and ZDF um, Arta in Mainz, <clears throat> which means that we have seven co-productions um, across the, the three departments of Arta. Um, and, and that's a really unique opportunity because it brings not just the one country to get you know on the project but it brings both countries together as well as the the headquarters uh, of Arte in Strasbourg so that's been really important for us and then just you know we're planning that the broadcast the global broadcast launch will be end of February next year just so that you get that kind of time schedule perspective thank you thank you Don I think that was that was a that was a good quick Time go for it. I also have something to add. That is to say, also another really great uh, benefit of partnering with Arte on this project, which we're very grateful for, is that we've been able to also tap in into a network of public broadcasters across the European continent and uh, the rest of, I suppose, the global north uh, in the form of the European Broadcasting Union. We um, have presented three times to the EBU, the project, and our um, going to be uh, working with the broadcasters who are part of the EBU to bring them into this global broadcasting event, which is um, basically a, a window of time from um, early next year after the Berlinale where the films will be broadcast by various broadcasters who will select a customized package of films from the collection to broadcast to their audiences around the world, which means that we have then an opportunity to have a global conversation on migration that takes place with all these filmmakers. But also it means that we have an opportunity to present 25 incredible voices from the African continent to the world where their films are discussed, where their careers also get to be impacted by this. So it's a really great partnership as well with Arte and um, the beginning of a wider network with a, a bigger um, number of broadcasters across the world. And then, then um, Steps has its own distribution platform for distribution uh, documentary films on the African continent called AfriDocs. Um, those who would like to see some great African documentaries can go to afridocs.net to see what we curate for the African audience, films that can be watched anytime, um, anywhere in Africa. But we also, through Afridocs, work with broadcasters on the African continent. And we all know in the TV industry that there's such a great shortage of African documentaries being shown on our screens and um, through this initiative um, or through this platform of AfriDocs we'll be distributing these films and sharing them with broadcasters on the continent from next year as well. So this will be um, a truly global event um, on, of introducing African voices to the world. Gosh, it's an incredible meeting of minds and such an amazing initiative i'm just it's just i'm stunned it's it's amazing it's so exciting to hear that you know again it's african stories told by african filmmakers um ek maybe we can go back to you i mean what is this what, you, you sort of touched on it initially um in terms of just being such a positive experience but as as a young filmmaker from africa uh, you, you know you're sort of representing i suppose many people on this call but um What's it been like collaborating internationally, and, and do you have any advice? You know, possibly, what have you learned through this through this um, experience you know, that you could perhaps share with young uh, filmmakers in Africa? Um, it's been more than um, the skills, um, skills exchange, and all of that. It's been a lot, even more about cultural exchange. You know. Um, just like Christina mentioned when she was talking about, sometimes she would send me emails and ask some questions and need some explanations about the story, about the film. And I'll be like, <laughs> you know, like why is she asking these questions? Like I've written um, the, like the dosia for the film and I believe that everything that I, I wanted to say about the film 
I've said it in the synopsis, in the treatment, and but she she had specific questions she wanted me to answer. And from where, like my culture and you know how we do things in Africa, it's like <laughs> she knows. So, um, but over time, I've I've been learning a lot also from that. Um, I think one of the things that the first thing that struck me um, when um, in Accra when Christina you know, shared with us about dramaturgy and all of that was how important it is to drill into the, the story that you're trying to tell. So like, um, for us, the first layer of the story, it's what is important, you know, but I, I started to understand how you know, it's important to try to decipher you know, other layers of the story and like go deep into the emotional aspect of the story. And so the story is not just this big narration, but then there is all these other layers and everything. And so that's, that's one of the biggest takeaway for me, you know, um, in doing these um, international co-productions and, and to understand that um, audiences differ, you know, and that, <laughs> and so one of the biggest challenge for me, even, even, even as I'm in post now, is understanding that, okay, I'm an African telling my African story, but I'm telling it to a global audience, you know, so how am I able to manage this, this um, dilemma, if you like, because I want my African audience to also, you know, um, follow the story and understand the story. But I also want my international audience to also understand the story. And there are some things that I would say, or my people I have conversations with in the film would say, and as an African, we understand it. It's, you know, we understand the depth of it, but <laughs> an European might be like, what is he talking about, <laughs> you know? So I think that the, so that, that's why when, when Christina suggested that we start the edit in France, I jumped on it because I, I, it, it was, I believe it was going to help me to sort of craft the story and, and find that balance because now um, I'm working with a French editor so, you know, so I mean, I'm, I'm the storyteller, but then the editor is a very important part of the storytelling. And for every decision that I make in the film, I want to hear what the editor thinks about it because he's my first audience and he represents an audience that I am not very conversant with. Um, so so a, lot, a lot of these things have really, really um, helped me a lot. In, in understanding the best way to tell um, a local story, but with a global, you know, um, with a global audience in mind, if you like, you know. So um, I, I think that what I would say, you know, if, like you said, maybe advice or something, is to say that um, I think the most important thing is to keep an open mind. Um, as a filmmaker. I think that's the, one of the biggest things that has helped me in, in this process. Um, I came in understanding that it's important to be honest, like with my feelings, you know, like not to try to, you know, just to keep an open mind, you know, and um, take in as much as I can, and then in the end, make the decisions that I need to make as the filmmaker. But being open to understand other cultures. Could Amazing, I, thank can you. Can I add something? Yes, of course, please, Crystal. I was just going to ask you to add, you know, your experience, I suppose, coming from Europe as well. Um, what is what have some of the benefits been of the culture exchange on, on your end? Yeah, I, I, um, I will answer, but I wanted to add something um, uh, after Ike is, uh, it's also because um, his film, he's the narrator and it's a personal story. Um, that's why I, I think you're saying that, because if it was something, else, I mean, another story and it doesn't have any link with the story, you just want to tell the story, uh, maybe we, we, we do not have, um, it's not necessary to have all these discussions, but it's also uh, on the cultural point of view and artistic point of view, it's interesting also, um, as you said, 
um, I would say that in France we like to write a lot, and we need uh, we need to have explanation about the characters, the context. How will you do? Tell me. Um, I, I want to dream. Tell me the sequence. Uh, who is he? Who are you? And I didn't know Ike very well. I met him just five days. So, and it's not enough. And that's why we had to, um, I sent many emails because I wanted to understand who is he as a person. And after to understand who is he as a filmmaker. Because as I, uh, like I said, the story, uh, this is his story, uh, his own story when he was uh, younger. So you're still young, but. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and so, so it was very important for me because um, uh, if I don't know who is he, I, I'm, I cannot, help him on the artistic point of view. Um, your question about the, the culture, of course it's always uh, wonderful and uh, to, to share our culture. It doesn't mean that it's easy. Um, it's interesting on the artistic point of view, uh, intellectual point of view, um, and uh, because we, we have uh, different, um, uh, different stories, our countries are, are different, our culture are different. So this is, um, of course, it's, uh, it can bring a lot and I can bring and wow, well, we, we share many things. But um, I would say that for, um, as the co-producer, um, sometimes it's difficult because we don't have, um, uh, I don't know the name in English, the reflex, the way you want to be reactive. Uh, for me during the shooting, I know what to do, um, very easy. But um, on that time, the first shooting, I was, I was not on the field and I cannot expect the line producer to, to do what I want him to do because I'm not there. <laughs> so it takes time. Uh, and once again, it's a human story. Um, it takes time to know the other, how, how, how is he thinking? Uh, is he re very reactive? Uh, can I trust him? Of course, there is this a matter of trust. Um, and uh, is he serious? Um, every, is everything very well prepared or not? <laughs> uh, and also because this film is quite complicated. It's, it's complex to cross five different countries. He speaks English, but in the Western Africa, they speak French. He doesn't understand French. You know, so um, different layers, I mean, real layers in the reality. <laughs> and after the, the, the film, it's, it's another story. And uh, so I was, I was kidding you when I said that we are just at the beginning of the post-production, but um, I'm, I'm very serious about that because I think that for a first film um, and because it's a co-production, it was necessary to start edit, editing that the first shooting to, to be on the same page and uh, to know what is missing, uh, what we need. And, and once again, because, um, because the main character of the film is the filmmaker for that story specifically. Um, so, and, and, and after on the artistic point of view, it's also, um, I understand English and I speak English, but uh, he has to write in English. Uh, so um, when we will, we will have to write the voice. Uh, hopefully I have done in tiny and uh, rough cut services and generation Africa because I, I mean, uh, I can write in English, but it's not a nice English. And, and this is a question, is it uh, more poetry? Is it an introspective voice? Is it, and um, so it's new for Ike. And, uh, and I know that at the beginning, he saw that my question was stupid, but- I um, think it was stupid. Yeah, I, just, I, I mean, we, we, in my culture and maybe myself, <laughs> just myself, um, I need to anticipate everything because because documentary, you are always surprised day after day. So I have to anticipate the most I can. Absolutely. Thanks, Crystal. I'm going to um, invite the uh, attendees to ask some questions shortly. I think one like last question there, Crystal, is just, you know, Don spoke earlier about um, you know, building networks and building, you know, forging relationships across the continent and, and you know, between uh, countries such as France and, and Nigeria in this instance. If, you know, have you learned through, you know, if you had any sort of words to share with your European co producing counterparts, what would, what would that be from this experience? If you, I mean, of course there are challenges and, and you've just sort of listed some of the, those creative considerations as well, but, um, has this, you know, opened your eyes in some ways in terms of future collaborations or, you know, changed the way that you might think about embarking on co-productions um, in Africa? 
definitely definitely um but because i, I have a um, um my company it's a little little company but i like to produce and co-produce this kind of uh, film and i like to work uh, i like working with um uh foreigners um i think wow well, i like that so definitely yes uh, yes, but um, that's why I like Generation Africa a lot, and I think it's really great and, and very brave to, to build that, because um, we, our companies are not structured, as, I mean, um, in France we have uh, so the producer and an assistant, a uh, line producer, and, well, but um, in that case, because I only know that experience, uh, Ike is a filmmaker for uh, Nollywood, and as he said yesterday evening, he said, when, I, when, when I'm the filmmaker, I come on the set, yeah. set and everything is done. He just have to say, okay, go. <laughs> and, but in documentary, we don't have the same uh, finance and you don't have the same budget. So we cannot have many assistants everywhere. It doesn't make sense. And so definitely I would like, but we need to find, we need to be on the same page and to learn each other to, um, um, to, to, to better know about the, the organization of the production company. And it was the case in that film. Um, we had a line producer, but I wasn't, of course, I wasn't on the field. Um, but uh, I have the responsibility of the film and the responsibility of the finance. So it's, um, it's, it's difficult because I've never been in Lagos and what would have been, and also the pandemic, what would have been really relevant for me, uh, well, um, um, I, 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 would, uh, I would have liked to go to Lagos to meet people in Passion 8, his company, to, to meet the uh, account manager, to meet the line producer, to meet everyone and to be sure that uh, we can work together. Um, because it's not easy with WhatsApp and email and, um, you know. <laughs> so yes, definitely, I think I can, um, I can pass on my skills in financial, uh, financial editing, uh, in, in, um, in co-production, um, how to anticipate, how to build, how to, well, everything. But um, I have to learn as well uh, from, from their perspective and how, how Fashion 8 or another production company, how do they want to work? Because I don't think that we, we um, French producer, um, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that uh, we are a good producer, uh, and I don't think they could be the best producer, but we need to find a way yeah. <laughs> to co-produce. So it doesn't mean that this is the French perspective or the African perspective. It means we have to invent, you yeah. say, invent, imagine, imagine um, a, middle a new, ground. Yeah, a middle ground. I, I don't know how, step by step, we will find it, but... Um, but uh, I have some ideas. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I mean, uh, typically. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying something very concrete. Uh, during the shooting, um, I was surprised because they had only one line producer. But I think that's during the shooting, because they had to cross five different countries. It's difficult for just one person to be responsible for everything, and it it would have been better to have two people. Um, because at, at some point it's, uh, the line producer is becoming crazy, it's, it's too much. It's too much, and if it's tired, and if it's too much uh, responsibility, at the end, there will be a problem in the film. So, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I stayed focused on the film, the sequences, the characters, um, and after, this is the charm of documentaries. You expect something, you don't have it, so you have to be reactive and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, it sounds like you've you've both really worked really hard on on you know both in your own capacity, but also in in meeting each other halfway and and, and working out this sort of reimagining what that relationship looks like and, and and how to make sure there's an amazing film that comes out at the end of this. Um, but, you, but you know, this is um, in terms of co-production, this is the same um, uh, when we 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 make uh, applications for in English uh, English applications. They ask. 1,000 words, 500 words, and um, for us, it's always it's it's always an exercise because um, we don't care. But uh, but they are right actually. <laughs> but um, be, be, because I think that we um, we 
we, we, how can I say that? Uh, there is a specific and intimate relation to what is called cinema. And, uh, and when you don't speak the same language, um, except the fact that sometimes I can feel frustrated because I want to say something very specific and I cannot find the word, exactly the word in English, but what is called cinema, I think that I have to learn about that from African filmmakers and maybe on the other, on the other side. Thank you. Um, I'd love to invite, I've, I've messaged in the chat, uh, uh, opening up the conversation to any attendees. If you have any questions, please feel free to add them in. Uh, we've got a shout out from Agnes Lisa Wegner, who's joining us from, from Germany and is finding this all really interesting and a big thank you from her. Um, I believe someone has their hand up. Let's see. Oh, it's you, Tani. Go for it. I was going to say that, you know, what, what Christilla and Ike are talking about, that kind of cultural um, exchange as well. Because um, within Africa itself, there are very uh, numerous cultures uh, and approaches to production. Uh, Nollywood makes films completely differently to how films are made in Uganda. That's why we have Nollywood and Ugaliwood, to how films are made in West Africa, where the culture and the approach to production is very much uh, linked to um, French approaches to film product production. I think uh, for us as a production company as well, it's been like a huge learning to kind of navigate these different country cultures within the continent and to kind of um, play a kind of a middle man. Um, and, and in this case, particularly when we are actually translating this to also another co-producer from outside of the continent. Um, I think that um, that speaks to um, a kind of a point in, in kind of the history of cinema that we are in Africa right now, where in the past, a lot of our filmmaking approaches have been very much linked to a colonial history. Um, so, you know, we have been producing predominantly with certain countries as South African production companies. In West Africa, they've been producing with mostly France, this kind of thing. Um, and there's a kind of a division on the continent of which has which runs along colonial lines which we are by setting up these south south collaborations collaborations between different african countries within the south and within the continent we're kind of at a point where we're kind of transcending that um, in a sort of way but there needs to be more experiences of this kind of thing there needs to be more experiences of filmmakers from different parts of africa making films outside of their kind of um, local context in order to in order to make our cinema richer as well um, and um, this is what I wanted to share as well as a lesson from the from the perspective of steps thank you I can I just add that that very quickly Jolene yeah sorry um, you know, a big learning experience for us has been um, finding the right language uh, across the, the continent, how to describe cinema, um, what our different expectations are. So it's been like a real challenge, but at the same time, an opportunity um, to learn these things. And, you know, by the end of the project, we'll be able to really share a lot of those experiences and, and, and allow that community to grow even further. But just to learn a different language or to understand each other's language around cinema has been a big, big task. Thanks, Don. I mean, I think, you know, as if to add anything more to your workload, I think it would be incredible to, there's such a huge opportunity here for, to archive and, and, and also to, I don't know, form some sort of handbook. And so it's great to hear that, you know, you, you are going to hopefully put that, share that as well. Because I think there's just an incredible amount of learning that you've You've gone through in terms of exploring language and identifying those processes and, and systems and in some cases sort of reinventing them um, where necessary so not to add more to your to-do list but i think there's there's um, an incredible wealth of knowledge there that would be amazing to share with filmmakers and, and producers um you know across the continent and and abroad so please just add that to your to your outcomes tiny <laughs> once once you get a gap to breathe I'd like yeah, to add something just after done because um, what was really great, um, I remember in, um, in uh, Ouagadougou, 
um, the, the, the second day, uh, Dan and Tiny decided to, to um, they asked us to watch together uh, films from um, white democracy, different films. And it was really um, interesting uh, to, to grasp the different feelings. And it was uh, the right way to find a common language around cinema. And this is what I did again with uh, Ike. He sent me one film. And so we, we, we discussed about the film um, and I sent other documentaries and the DOP as well, where all together and, and Tiny and Dan. And it's interesting because um, it's easier to speak about sequences than uh, our phantasm or you know, imagination. So I, maybe there is only one language, but we have to share uh, what we like in the country. Definitely. I wish I could be a fly on the wall in those conversations. So, um, yeah, I think there's there's almost something else also happening outside of, as, of films being created, co-productions being formed. I think um, just being able to witness those conversations and, and be a fly on the wall must, must be incredible. Um, we have uh, we have a question. Uh, Tara's just made a note here, which is definitely one of the questions as well, is to speak about um, the Generation Africa docs that are at Encounters. I know we've spoken about Slash Shelter. Um, Tanya, do you want to mention what we can look forward to this year in the program? Sure. Um, so The Last Shelter is... Um, a film from Mali made by Usman Samaseko. It's his second film. Uh, we co-produced it with uh, his company and Andrea Diara's company in Mali called DS Productions, as well as a French production company uh, called Point de Jour, Le Film Zubali Bari, uh, with Estelle Robin Yu as the producer. And um, it's set in a house um, on the edge of the Sahara Desert in Mali, in Mali, in a town called Gao where it's a frontier town where um, migrants uh, coming back from the desert having been unsuccessful to cross. This is where they come to recuperate from the traumas of the desert and also to prepare for the journey back home. But also migrants coming from the rest of West Africa, trying to make their way through the desert into the countries bordering the Mediterranean, mainly Algeria. This is where they stop before they make their journey forward. So a lot of what he filmed in the beginning was um, conversations between young people talking about their reasons for their mi migration choices, uh, their perspectives around migration. But eventually he was able to form very incredible relationships with three characters, two young girls um, coming from broadly Burkina Faso, trying to cross to Algeria um, as well well as one uh, slightly older lady called Natasha, who's been living in the house for over five years and unable to go back home because um, the traumas of trying to cross have made her have amnesia and she doesn't remember where she comes from. And it really is an empowering kind of uh, portrait of these people in um, a kind of a transition um, and um, he really tells a story from the perspective of young people. And as you said, fly on the wall. You really get to be a fly on the wall and understand a world that, firstly, we, we especially us here in Southern Africa and people everywhere else in the world are not aware what the experiences of young people wanting to cross the, the, the Mediterranean are. You get to understand also what it means to um, have migration in Africa as a family project. Lots of people come together to put together resources to send the best of the village, the best of the family to cross the desert so that they can be able to bring support and help families out of poverty. Um, and that responsibility on young people is quite crushing. And you get to see that in the House of Migrants um, in the last shelter. Philip, uh, Philip and I mentioned earlier, it's been doing lots of festivals internationally. Um, it's won a grand prize at uh, CPH Docs. And we're really proud to be able to share this with a South African audience uh, or an African audience, South African audience for the first time here. This is an African premiere. The other film is a film called Zinda, which is directed by Aicha Maki. Aicha is from Niger. She's also making her second feature film with this project. Um, it was produced with her company, uh, Taboo Productions, as well as with uh, Usman Zamaseko, because they know each other as a co-producer from Africa, and um, uh, Point de Jour, Le Films de Balibari, with Clara uh, Villeneuve, um, who was the co-producer in France. And in this film, um, 
Aisha goes to her hometown, which is Zinda, and uh, looks at a particular neighborhood called Karakara, which is on the outskirts of the city, which um, this neighborhood started off as a kind of um, a leper colony where people with leprosy would be kind of uh, relegated to, but has grown over the, uh, the years to also be the home of many of people who are marginalized on other kind of uh, bases, but mostly poverty. And he, she looks at, um, the, the differences in the life that she's and the opportunities that she's had as someone with more privilege, as opposed to these young people, uh, young men who are in kind of gangs, hyper-masculine gangs, uh, which are organized to protect, uh, to also eke out a survival for the, for, for the community. But she's able to establish a really incredible bond with these young, with these men um, in order to see what their aspirations are and to also see what the struggle of living in a a country that is um, uh, becoming a well more or less a failed state and what strategies for survival these young people are kind of um, forced to make and how they're wanting to kind of build their lives build families and so kind of self-actualize it's a very beautiful and poetic uh, visually strong film um, both of these films are showing at encounters and um I just want to see Zinda's available 24 seven from fire from what I and as well as last shelter from what I can see on the schedule. But while I'm holding the mic, I also want to say that Steps has another set of films at Encounters this year. We have been working since the beginning of the pandemic on a South African collection uh, called Mzanti in the time of COVID where we've been working with South African filmmakers to tell stories about our unique experience of the pandemic. So we have short films that we have uh, made. Uh, the one uh, called uh, Lindela and the Lockdown, which recently won an award for best of documentary at the South African Film and Television Awards was shown at last year's Encounters. Um, the rest of the films, Lefu, made by Omelgam Tiane, which is showing how the pandemic has affected how people are able to grieve and mourn their loved ones in the event of death because of all of the health uh, regulations and restrictions of COVID. Very um, also poetic and beautifully edited film and shot. Um, the other film is Schools Shut Down, which is directed by Kasterine Neohula, a young director, which was made with a participatory of, um, approach in her hometown of Orange Farm, where she looks at how young people are um, who come from a marginalized uh, background, uh, coping with having to study online without access to data and online facilities. And then uh, the last film is called Jeanette Makes Mask, which is directed by Nadine Kluter, which looks at a family of um, migrants who were surviving through uh, making um, art and craft for the Curio Market in Cape Town and how they adapted to make make masks, like a uh, mask for uh, COVID prevention and how um, they uh, were also kind of interacting in the early days of the pandemic with communities in order to raise awareness about the importance of making masks. And this film is really just also about just resilience in the pandemic. We're making more films which are not in the festival in this collection with our national broadcaster, SABC and NFVF in a co-production. So we're looking forward to those as well. But yeah, that's what we're doing at Encounters. And um, I think if people go to the website, Tara is sharing all the links very kindly on the chat you can be able to see more about the films but uh, the two films of generation africa are available 24 7 so you can already watch those two films the last shelter and zinda don has his hand up yeah just very quickly if you just back to zinda i mean niger niger has um a population of Young people under 18 of more than 50%. Um, their youth population um, under 30, 35 is probably around 75% of the country. So this is a, a huge ticking time bomb. And it's also one of the reasons why we brought Generation Africa into life. Um, and that's going to be the next phase of the project once all the films are finished and it's been broadcast, is to get the films on the ground into the communities to get them to talk about how to deal with their different 
challenges and opportunities. I mean, Niger has just got this huge, huge youth population, very under-resourced country, almost a failed state. Um, and part of Zinda is, is looking at this from IH's perspective, but also through these young men, many of them in these gangs, and they, you know, they, they're forced to smuggle petrol, even though Niger is a, a petrol producing country, but they smuggle petrol from Nigeria just because they can get it cheaper um, by smuggling it across the borders. And so the huge opportunity is to get these films into the communities to talk about, yeah, the future and what's the future for young people in Africa. Thanks. Thanks, Don. There was definitely a question as well as, you know, to ask you about the next phase of Generation Africa. And I think that's great to hear about the sort of distribution plans um, on the continent. Is there, is there, is it mainly focused at the moment on, on, you know, finishing the films that are currently in, in production and post-production and then distributing those? Or is there another call out coming, um, coming soon? I mean, I'm sure you have your hands full, um, but what are the next steps uh, for Generation Africa? No, it's to finish the films and then start releasing them on the festival circuit and then aim for the global broadcast. But after the broadcast, um, we, you know, we have plans for uh, developing impact strategies for each of the film teams in each of the countries, um, not just in the 16 countries, but continental wide, where the films will be made available free to organizations to engage people in discussions about the future for young people in Africa, what migration means, what are the opportunities of migration. Um, I mean, just another thing, you know, there's so many stories in the collection, but one is about uh, remittances, because more money flows into Africa from migrants remittances than from foreign aid. And that's directly going to people who use it to develop so it's these kind of stories that will just widen open the discussion much further and it's also why we create projects with collection of films because it just adds the insight adds the depth by looking at a topic from very different angles from di different voices different um, styles of filmmaking but um, all these different stories that just add to a great understanding and opportunity to get involved in that discussion and use it to create action in order to actually make proper judgments around how to develop the continent. Thank you, Don. Um, we, we have a question that's come through from, from the audience. Um, I'm going to read it over here. What are some of the challenges that you may face with telling the overall story of the film when co-producing with different countries, backgrounds, or cultures? Um, Tiny, do you want to have a go? I don't want to project this onto anyone. Should I read the question again? So what are some of the challenges that you may face with telling the overall story of the film when co-producing with different countries, backgrounds or cultures? So, I mean, what we've done in the Generation Africa project is to put the, the filmmaker's voice as our number one priority. Um, we have partners who haven't put any prescriptions as to what the overall story should be. I think there was a curatorial process on the part of Generation Africa in terms of wanting to have a wide range of stories so that the collection uh, can represent uh, a number of experiences that um, African audiences can relate to. Um, each of the filmmakers um, has had support from uh, story consultants during uh, development, as well as dramaturgy consultants uh, during the shooting of the film and the editing. But the approach to all of these uh, kind of uh, support, this professional support, has been um, for the consultants to kind of create the best environment for filmmakers to tell the story that they want to tell, uh, for, for filmmakers to kind of um, find clarity in how they're going to tell the stories that they want to tell. So we haven't had any filmmakers who are experiencing challenges in terms of um, uh, the over, I'm just reading the question again, in terms of the, the overall storytelling. Um, I think that uh, there's also been, um, I think, some challenges rather for um, production in terms of 
Now I'm thinking like last year from March onwards, a lot of the stories were put on hold or were delayed and had to change because of the pandemic. Um, so for example, there's a story that we're making in Cameroon, um, which is a road movie between, um, just a classic example of the pandemic problems, which is a road movie from, from English speaking Cameroon into French speaking Cameroon, where um, it's a road movie which will be, sh which had to be shot several times in, and edited as one trip. And they'd shot like two or three of the trips already. And they had another two trips to shoot. And now suddenly the pandemic happens, so they have to wait. And when things open up again, everybody's wearing masks. So now you're having continuity problems because you can't edit this into one story. So a lot of it has been us kind of facing challenges, like very practical surprises of documentary challenges and figuring out how to navigate around it. I think um, a lot of the support that we have been given and that uh, our supporters in the Generation Africa kind of network have been given has been to be like, what is your story and how can you do this practically in the context of documentary? And I think these are the challenges that anyone making a documentary, a creative documentary faces in the work that they do. So, yeah. John, is there something that you wanna add? Because it's, I'm not sure if I'm forgetting something. No, I think it's just, you know, to, um, to keep us true to the cinematic vision as much as possible, to offer that opportunity for filmmakers to make creative documentaries that are, um, not didactic, um, but that really tell a story in as um, cinematic way as possible, because that's how we can reach the reach even wider and more diverse audiences from that approach. So that's, you know, and that also means looking at the universality of the story. So it can be accessible, you know, from Japan to, to Canada to Botswana um, and, um, and Colombia as well. Um, but so it's just to provide that support and the opportunity to really create something which is special and and different perhaps from what uh, filmmakers have been doing before. Super, thank you, Tiny and Don. Um, I, I suppose I have one question that I, I'm, I'm really interested in, in, in hearing from Nadja and Philippe is, you know, when you hear these descriptions from, from, from Don and Tiny sort of describing these, these films and these incredible narratives, I'm quite inquisitive to, to know what it must sound like uh, from a European perspective. I mean, these, these films will soon be part of your roster, Philip. Um, is, is that exciting to you? Can you start to gauge, you know, what that means in terms of narrative shared around migration up until this point and, and um, some impacts you could possibly forecast um, going forward once these films start to start being seen that side? <laughs> Okay, what I said in my introduction was we wanted to have, we were seduced by the fact that we would have um, films on African topics made by African filmmakers and African uh, teams. So um, for me, it's not that important. Um, uh, what is important for me is, is to have a, a good story, uh, uh, which is well told, um, with uh, fascinating um, protagonists and um, we don't have that much and, and what, what I am interested in is when I have seven or eight films I can broadcast on one specific topic which is in this case uh, uh, the topic of the, 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 the migrants and the migration refugees um, is to have uh, something as a kaleidoscopic view on the different topics so Kaleidoscopic on the topics themselves, the stories and the protagonists. Kaleidoscopic uh, um, uh, um, point of view on, on the art of filming, the art of telling the stories. That's right, Tiny, we, we didn't give any uh, uh, editorial guideline. We wanted to have uh, something like uh, uh, cinema d'auteur, um, stories told by directors with their own style, which all together give something like a, a, an African uh, kind of filming, telling the stories by themselves that nobody can do it better than, than they do it. So it was for us very interesting, interesting to have it on, on this, this, this huge multitude of, 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 of uh, point of views and, and uh, stories told. Well, I, I can't say more than, than that now in this case. Uh, uh, 
Is it very different for you, uh, Neta? Um, well, no, actually, it's pretty pretty similar. So, um, first of all, I want to say that it's very rewarding for me to to be here and to, um, yeah, first and foremost, to hear um, Ike and Christilla uh, telling about their journey in working on this project and how it evolves and how it's going to, I'm sure, going to flourish. Um, and also what uh, problems you had and how you managed to deal with them and um, also the way how you got together and worked together. It's very great to hear this because we're so much in the background and being in the background is actually what we want to be. We want to be very much uh, like, um, yeah, the funder who isn't involved. And that's how I want to answer it to your question. Uh, we wa don't want to be involved in the contents of the films at all. So it's important for us that it's, uh, I mean, on socially relevant uh, topics and everything that uh, Philip, uh, Tiny and Don uh, said, I mean, that it's creative films that can provoke dialogues and initiate discussions on those uh, topics. That's something that's very uh, important for, for us. Uh, when it comes to funding projects but other than that it's uh, not we don't see it as our job to like um, in any kind of way work with constraints in terms of uh, topics or um, or anything like that how the film should be be made or told so yeah I hope it answered your question there is maybe one thing I would like to add. There has been a, a, a very important act of pre-selection, which has been made uh, uh, by Tiny and Don uh, of uh, different projects. And I think we have, in this case, the excellence of uh, filmmaking on, from, from the African continent. And that's very important to me, to have a quality filming, quality documentary film, quality series. Absolutely, yeah. Great. That's so good to hear. Go for it, Tiny. I was just to say that um, um, with all that being said, there's a kind of a, a need for us to come to an agreement when we have a good film, at which point uh, in the shooting and in the editing, especially in the editing process, when we have a good film. And um, I think for that, I mean, a lot of the editorial work is done by us here at STEPS, but we also do have a lot of support from, from Arte um, and also other people in the kind of editorial process, including the professional supporters who are working on part of it. And I think a big part of the lesson is coming to an agreement about what constitutes a good film. And um, this is really great for all of us to have that kind of network, that community and support um, to help us with these editorial processes. Amazing. Thank you, Tiny. Are there any other, um, anything else uh, our amazing panelists would like to share or any other questions from the attendees? I'm sure Christilla is eager to get back to the edit that side as well. Um, if that's okay, then perhaps I'll I'll wrap it up. Is there any any other hands? I'm seeing if there's anyone that has any question, please go for it. But I'll I'll start sort of summarizing what we what we spoke about um, today. Um, we kicked it off with a, an introduction to you know the the origins of Generation Africa and and, and how that came to be. And you know very quickly realized what an incredible opportunity it's been for. Um, you know, skills exchange, financial exchange, and I think also really importantly, a, a cultural exchange that um, that uh, that we heard from Priscilla and Ike. Um, it's you know, it's also provide a, a glimpse of the incredible conversations that, that are that are, that are taking place, the, the amazing learning that seems to be taking place um, between all the participants. Um, I know, and um, there were some there were some comments as well around um you know being able to, i think it was liani that mentioned you know uh, possibly able to record that as well and, and just document african cinema so you know hopefully there's a way we can we can do that and, and create that handbook of sorts on the side um we also spoke about uh, you know having to 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 find a language for cinema i think that that don mentioned that and, and really um sort of understanding systems and the processes and having to reinvent those if we feel like those are no longer serving the, the context um and i think philip put it beautifully that you know it's really a, a kaleidoscope which is such a great word um of films that will that will kickstart dialogue um across the board and 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 i think that's so important and that's, you know, this is really only just the beginning in some ways. I think there's still going to be such incredible responses um, once you, 
you embark on some of those uh, those impact campaigns that you mentioned, Don. And it'd be amazing to start, you know, to check in again next year this time and, and see if any films have been distributed and released and, and, and what's come from that. Um, Tiny has run us through some of the films showing this year in the program and Tara has very helpfully uh, listed all of those in the chat. So please be sure to, to open those links and it's all available online in the program as well. And what's great about uh, doing things virtually is that you can catch these films 24 seven. So you don't have to rush from this panel discussion to the cinema across the way and watch it. You can catch it anytime and in the comfort of your pajamas, if you wish. Um, and I think it's it's we should just really recognize that this has all been made possible, um, you know, by the incredible support of the DW Academy, as well as the collaboration across Arte. And so hats off to you um, for really creating, you know, making something like this, this possible. Um, I think this is, you know, I kept on as we were, as everyone was just sort of sharing and speaking, I just keep thinking about what an incredible legacy this is. And, and it might not be clear to to you now and you know, Ike and Chris, you're really in the thick of it and editing a film and Tanya and Don, I'm sure you guys are just sort of, you know, heads across multiple projects and, and, and you might be um, quite, you know, heads sort of in the process, but for someone who's, you know, just observing this and, and, and hearing all these conversations, if we're talking about leading in cinema and, and thinking about legacy, I, I, would, I would say Generation Africa has to be it. So congratulations to everyone that's involved and, uh, I really hope that we can we can have a regular check in. Let's let's make this a part of the regular part of the encounters program and, and sort of see what comes from this and um, you know start to to archive things as well because thankfully this conversation has also been recorded. Um, thank you again so much to our incredible panelists for for their time and to all our attendees for joining as well and thank you for contributing with um, some great questions. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. I think everyone's happy with, with comments and the questions. Thank you so, so much and uh, have an incredible festival, everybody. And Thank thanks you. to Encounters for Thank hosting this panel. Yeah, thanks to everyone. Thank See you, you everyone. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you. Keep well. Thank you, everyone.